Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. This video is long overdue, and I should have made it a couple years ago, really, because it's a very important one. I've been putting it off because it's not a glamorous subject. It's not something we want to think about, and that's coaxial cables. But coaxial cables are really at the heart of your radio station. I always say that the antenna is everything, but I should say that the antenna system is everything. And the antenna system includes your coax cable. You can lose, you know, easily half of your power in your cable. So that makes it pretty important uh, as far as the choices you're going to make uh, on the quality and, and cost of the cable you're going to get. So no field operation, no antenna building. Uh, if you don't like me talking, this video is not for you. If you're new to this channel though, I have plenty of other radio videos that you can go check out. It used to be that ladder line was the main uh, feed line used for uh, antennas. And a ladder line is very simple. It's two parallel conductors uh, with uh, dielectric, well, air in this case, uh, in between them. And uh, the way it works is that you have two currents going in opposite directions and those currents create magnetic fields that spin around the wire basically one way on one wire and the other way on the other wire which they cancel each other and so there is no radiation but coax cable is a little more practical and i think that's why it's mostly used today coax cable is made up of a center conductor which can be a single conductor or multi-strand uh, that is, uh, it has a dielectric around it, so an insulator. Then you have the braid or the shield, which is uh, also, uh, which, which is copper in most cases. Some have uh, some kind of aluminum foil on top of it for, for a better shield. Uh, and uh, you have, of course, the insulation on the outside of the cable. Now, there are many different kinds of coax cables, of course, and some are much smaller, thinner than others, and some are better in quality than others, and that's what we're going to look into. You can think of coax cable basically as a pipe. You have the outside of the pipe, which is the shield, and uh, the current goes inside, and the shield prevents radiation to the outside of the cable. Now, cables have a certain resistance, and of course resistance applied to AC current, which you know, radio frequency is, uh, is called impedance. And cables for radio, that the radios we use, uh, has a 50 ohm impedance. That's different from, say, cables used in uh, CCTV or television, which is usually 75 ohm. And different from ladder line, which can go, you know, usually is 300 ohm or 450 ohm. For low power operations, QRP, survival radio, you know, we are not very likely to use more than you know, 5 to, say, 30 watts. Uh, and for that purpose, uh, we all have used this stuff. And you can see here, compared to the BNC connector, that it's very thin. It's also very flexible, and that's a great advantage. The pro and that's RG, RG174, basically. Uh, RG174 is uh, pretty lossy. Uh, it's pretty good at lower frequencies. Of course, the higher you go in frequency, the best cable you are going to need, especially in UHF uh, and even VHF. For HF, not so much, but for instance, this RG174, I try not to use above 20 meters because I know the losses are going to be very important. I also try to limit the length of the cable and the longest cable I will use with RG174 is about 10 meters, so 33 feet. Now that's just kind of a, it's not something I calculated, but uh, it's just from experience. Uh, using longer cables, things become a little dicey. Uh, the problem also with RG174 is that it's not very strong. Uh, it will eventually break and uh, 
that implies that you really should have two cables with you. So that's the problem with our G174. You can get lucky and get very good quality cable that will last you a while, but you know, we all buy cable from China mostly, uh, and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. Uh, I really highly suggest that you buy cable that's made in the US or actually uh, maybe made in China but uh, with quality control, you know, American quality control or European quality control, so to speak. Now, there is something very important that I need to say about tuners here. Because we, you know, we use tuners with antennas that are not exactly resonant. The important part is that if you connect a tuner close to your radio, well, the impedance of the antenna is wrong, of course, otherwise you wouldn't use a tuner, but that impedance is carried on onto the cable, and the cable sees the wrong impedance, and that's where you're going to have very, very high losses. So having a tuner at the radio is not the best way to go, because you're going to lose a lot of power there. That's the reason why, well, one of the reasons why I didn't buy the uh, KX2 built-in tuner because I know that if I use uh, you know somewhat long cable with an antenna that's not tuned uh, I'm gonna lose a lot and if I only have two or three watts I don't want to lose half of it or even more so it's much better to place the tuner at the antenna immediately after the antenna and then uh, have your cable run to the radio this way your cable will see 50 ohms the whole length of the cable and losses will be minimized. That's why I believe uh, unfed antennas, which have the uh, transformer, the impedance transformer, or the tuner at the end of the wire, are so uh, efficient, work so well, because they offer the cable an impedance that's very close to 50 ohms. So you have very little losses. Now, if you want a long feed line connected to a non-resonant antenna, you better use a ladder line, but that's for another video. So back to RG174. I used RG174 for a very long time, but I had cables break, you know, break again, and I lost a few cables that way because, you know, you take them to the field and someone steps on your wire, you know, trips on it, and boom, you got a broken cable. So I switched to a cable that's a little more uh, rugged, and that's RG316. RG316 is white, and it's much stiffer than uh, RG174. And that's a bit of a pain, but it hasn't been so much of a problem in the field, and it's really, really more rugged. Now, any cable that's that thin is going to have problems with this part here right at the connector because of course when it moves that way the cable here that's where it's going to break and uh, that's the problem I've had with my RG316 after a while you can tell that the insulation of the cable is breaking up uh, RG174 will do it too of course but RG316 will do it uh, maybe a little bit later and uh, you know this is uh, not as strong as RG316 now, I don't think RG316 is better in terms of uh, efficiency. So if I have to use a longer cable, or I have to go up in frequency, then I'm going to use something thicker like RG58. Lately, I've been thinking of getting a much better cable, even for HF, and that's LMR240UF. LMR is made by Times Microwave in the US, and it's a very good quality low loss cable. The UF stands for Ultraflex. And I'll tell you, these people have a good sense of humor because Ultraflex is not flexible. I have LMR400, which is a much thicker cable, and uh, it's extremely stiff. And uh, the regular LMR400 is probably even stiffer than that. And it should be called Ultra Stiff, but. Uh, they choose to call the uh, less stiff version Ultraflex. Anyway, I recommend the Ultraflex cable because otherwise you're going to have something very, very stiff. Uh, but the LMR240 now is a thinner cable. It's thicker than RG174 or RG316. 
and it has much much less losses you can use longer runs of the cable and you can use it on a VHF and UHF the problem is that it's very expensive and I'm just gonna have to break the bank and uh, just you know order some and hope it's going to last a very long time but you know it's mechanically bigger so it should now some good advice I can give you about getting a good quality cable for a lower price is to look into military surplus cables and this one I only paid a few dollars you can tell here that this BNC connector is something else it's a military BNC connector it's um, extremely rugged and it's watertight and I wouldn't be surprised if this connector alone uh, you know cost uh, probably around twenty dollars and I only paid a few bucks for this cable it says UMR76 on it I don't know what kind of coax that is but it works really well it says 50 ohms on it and I'm sure this is a very very good cable it's very flexible and uh, it hasn't given me any trouble whatsoever and you can really tell the quality of these BNC connectors is above uh, commercial grade so don't hesitate to look into military surplus cables uh, for coax because uh, that's really good stuff one thing you have to be careful about is that for portable operations you really buy a coax that has a multi-stranded center connector otherwise it's going to break very quickly when it comes to camp radio when you can actually carry stuff you have a vehicle or something like that you might want to choose a thicker cable uh, even lower losses especially if you're going to run that cable for a certain distance and maybe up a mast and for that I use LMR 400 and that's very low loss uh, it also cost me an arm and a leg <laughs> I paid a hundred dollars a hundred bucks for a cable and that's crazy but uh, I use that with VHF and uh, you know if I have to use it with UHF I will do that too it's an excellent cable but uh, it's pretty thick too it's probably the thickness of my thumb uh, same with uh, actually uh, the cheaper RG213 which is very common in home installations it's a good cable it's, it has a multi-stranded center so uh, you can uh, flex it uh, you know to a certain angle and it's a very good cable that you can take for portable operations if you have the means to carry it I'm not going to get into the uh, characteristics of every kind of coax cables out there and believe me there are a lot of them and I know people are going to comment you know oh, you should try this one and I've tried this one it's great and I know <laughs> I know there are a lot of them uh, what you should do really is not consider your coax cable as an afterthought something that's not important because it really really is again you can lose more than half of your power in your cable so it's an area where you're going to have to spend a little bit of money uh, to get something decent of course it depends on the frequency you're using if you're operating mostly on 80 meters you know 3.5 megahertz it doesn't make a huge difference now if you go up in frequency above 20 meters and you know of course VHF and UHF uh, you need really really good quality cable and that's where you are going to have to spend a lot but you have to admit that if you're connecting a $500 radio to a crappy piece of coax cable <laughs> excuse my French it doesn't make much sense if you spend time uh, selecting or building efficient antennas uh, you don't want to lose most of your power in the cable and that is my message today mind your coax have a good one.